Okay, dear friends, uh, warmly welcome to this uh, de democracy stage uh, today here in, at uh, uh, Arvamus. Uh, after some uh, uh, drama in the beginning because of the wind, I, I hope we can start and I hope that uh, uh, Merle will, will get her foot fixed uh, with some, some ice. So you better be careful when walking around here since uh, the wind can be really nasty. Uh, we are about to talk uh, uh, about uh, uh, the Nordic countries and if the Nordic countries uh, uh, still uh, are a role model for uh, Estonia. I myself, my name is uh, Krister Haglund and I re represent the Nordic Council of Ministers here in, in Estonia. And uh, since uh, some of you uh, uh, might uh, not know what uh, Nordic uh, uh, Council of Ministers stand, uh, stands for, so I, I can uh, briefly tell you that it's, uh, it's an, uh, a representation. We are actually uh, representing uh, the Nordic governments uh, here in Estonia. And what we are doing, we have been here since uh, uh, Estonia regained uh, its independence in 1991, and together with, with Estonians, uh, authorities, uh, ministries, uh, uh, NGOs, and so forth, we have done a wide variety of projects. And uh, always uh, or almost always uh, together with, with Estonians because that's a, a good way to, to have a guarantee that what we are doing uh, are uh, the right things, the things that uh, Estonia and Estonians benefit from. But uh, since uh, Estonia has had really an amazing achievements uh, during uh, since uh, since uh, 1991, uh, I mean, for example, if you think about uh, uh, economy, for example, everything that has been built since then, it's uh, it's truly truly uh, amazing, and that's why we are are uh, thought that it could be interesting to see that uh, that. Uh, uh, since we have cooper cooperated a lot, but uh, on what areas should we cooperate uh, then uh, in, the, in the future? We also uh, conducted a poll uh, last spring about uh, to, to ask Estonians that what do they feel about uh, the cooperation with the Nordic countries. And astonishing 91% of the Estonians uh, thought that uh, the cooperation with the Nordic countries is uh, is very import important or very important, and uh, uh, a majority uh, thought that it's important uh, to to continue and even deepen uh, the the cooperation. But how and 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 what type of of, of projects? That's of course uh, the question uh, for today. And you are of course invited to to actively uh, participate. So just uh, raise your hand if you have a, have a questions or or comments. And then we have these cards as well. So so we, we might uh, ask you some questions. And if you agree, then then thumbs up. And and if not, uh, then uh, uh, thumbs down. And uh, uh, another uh, thing, uh, practical matter, is also that uh, this discussion is uh, streamed live on, on uh, Facebook, the Nordic Council of Ministers uh, uh, Facebook, so, so just so that you know that, uh, that uh, there are uh, perhaps uh, other people who are listening and watching us also right now. But uh, then I uh, would like to introduce uh, 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 the panelists we have here today, and uh, I'll start with uh, start with Her Excellency, uh, the Ambassador of Finland, uh, Kirsti uh, Narinen. And uh, yeah, <laughs> big hands for for, for Kirsti. Uh, she is uh, totally wonderful uh, and 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 really 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 uh, a good ambassador for Finland. I'm a Finn myself, so 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 it's easy for me to be to be to be to be object. <laughs> And and, uh, and unfortunately, Kirsty is leaving us now. Now, in, in at the end of August, and, and there is there's a, her sex successor is then uh, coming uh, from the beginning of, of September. Then we have uh, uh, Kai Klandorf, who is CEO for the Estonian non-profit uh, organizations, or Vapa Yhendusten Liitu Juhattaja, as uh, you would say in in, in uh, Estonian. And uh, I guess uh, a person that everybody knows is uh, Tavi Roivas, who is uh, a member of the parliament, Riigi uh, Koku, uh, and the former uh, prime minister. 
And then we have, have uh, Johan uh, Kiberehke, and he is a uh, uh, research manager for, uh, on uh, Turu Uuringut, and he was actually the one who was doing this, uh, this uh, uh, conducting this poll that, that I was uh, telling you about uh, the, uh, during the spring. So, so whenever we say something that we, we think that the Estonians would uh, like to do this and that, then he might even have some facts about what, uh, what we are thinking. So off we, off we go and, and, and uh, according to, to, to the, to the uh, question for today's discussion, I'll, I'll start with you, Tavi, that uh, uh, is uh, the Nordic uh, uh, countries uh, uh, a role model anymore? And if they are, then uh, in what respect? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. I think it's a very interesting discussion. And, and uh, while preparing for it, I actually thought this um, through a lot myself as well. Uh, obviously, any Estonian in the room would be entitled to tell his or her own opinion. And I can only represent my point here. But I think that the Nordics are very much a role model still. And perhaps we don't um, realize it. Um, as much as we did uh, in the early 90s, then everybody understood that you know we want to achieve the living standard of Finland, or we want to achieve the level of uh, democracy like Finland. You know, when we started rebuilding our society, especially Finland as the closest neighbor, for many reasons, not only geography, uh, was a very very strong role model, and also of course Sweden, Denmark, and and, and others. Um, now, uh, today, I think um, we still have a lot to admire in the Nordic countries in terms of a living standard, in terms of um, the maturity of the society, which I think we are still um, lagging uh, in a way, or we are obviously moving to that direction, in my opinion. Um, but we also think, at least in, in my opinion, that in some things, in order to be more like the Nordics, we should do things a bit differently. And, and this includes uh, a bit faster development, uh, because if you, if you want to catch up with somebody who is ahead, you need to move faster. That's quite obvious. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Tavi. Uh, Kai, uh, uh, what uh, comes to your mind uh, when, 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 when faced by this question? Thank you. Um, does that? OK, it works. Very good. Um, I think the question is not as simple to answer yes and no. There's, there's things that we have to learn from the Nordic countries, definitely, yes. There's things that we should take them as a role model, um, yes. But does that mean that we have to sort of build our society based on how Nordic countries have established themselves? Or should we, in every aspect, learn from the Nordic countries? Then no. I think Estonia is a country um, quite dynamic when it comes to its size, when it comes to its civil society, when it comes to how Estonians operate and, and what kind of um, what kind of people we actually are by nature, and I think we have a lot to take from the Nordic countries, but not blindly. Everything that we see in Nordic countries is something that we need to consume, or everything we need to adapt to Estonian culture. Definitely no, but as as. Um, as a civil society sector, I do see that we have a lot to learn from civil society organizations, both in Norway, in Denmark, in, in Sweden, in Finland. And, and I think where we actually need to lead ourselves is not from us Estonians as pupils or, or students who need to learn from the Nordic countries, but it needs to be a cooperation where we actually share our experience with what has been established established in, in the Nordic countries and, and see what is it something that we have to offer and, and what is it that they have um, far better experience with. And, and I agree with, with Davi in the sense that the, the development is, is way, um, way further along in Nordic countries when it comes to civil society sector because Estonian civil society sector is quite young. And, and there are things that we need to take up as a 
as an example from, from the Nordic countries, but um, stating that there needs to be adaptation and there needs to be analysis of, of what it is actually that we're taking. Because when we look at, for example, education sector, Finnish education sector is very well off, I agree. Um, very good results, but that does not mean that everything uh, that is is decided upon or every decision that Finnish education system established does not mean that we have to take that up in Estonia as well. Thank you. Then I thought that I would uh, jump to, to, to you, Han, uh, if you could answer. But but uh, it would be good also, of course, if you and interesting, if you could uh, reveal a little bit uh, about uh, the, the opinion poll that you were conducting and 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 if we could could get any answers uh, from that. Uh, yes, indeed, I have carried out two studies during the last two years uh, about Estonian people attitudes towards northern countries. And uh, actually, if Krista said it, it was astonishing that 90% of people supported closer cooperation, then uh, for me it was not astonishing. Uh, it was already from the start of the study, there was no doubt that the Estonian people are very, very positive towards um, Nordic countries. I remember it was years ago when uh, our former president, Thomas Hendrik Hilves, uh, uh, said that Estonia wants to be a boring northern country and uh, actually it, it, it expressed the general attitude of, of the people. Uh, I, I am not going to tell uh, very uh, precisely about the results. Uh, I think this is, uh, the report is still available on your webpage. But uh, indeed, uh, Nine from ten respondents uh, consider good cooperation with Nordic countries very or rather important. It's not only in Estonia, we made a poll also in Latvia and Lithuania, and it was a common attitude in all three Baltic countries. And uh, the respondents also had very positive attitude towards more closer cooperation. Uh, and, uh, uh, and the overall majority, there uh, three from four respondents uh, would like have closer cooperation even on the institutional level. So through uh, Nordic Council or uh, participating in official meetings and so on. Uh, in a survey in 2016 commissioned by Swedish Embassy, we asked directly, should Estonia take Sweden as example to learn from? And 77% of Estonian respondents answered pro certainly or probably probably yes. So uh, the general attitude towards Nordic countries is very positive. Uh, but if we look uh, the most important direction in this cooperation, then uh, economy of course is considered to be the most important, uh, followed by education and science, tourism, culture, innovation, new technologies. Uh, but um, such humanitarian spheres of life, like uh, refugee policy, integration of minorities, uh, equal rights, development of civil society, uh, these uh, spheres remained on the last places on the ranking. So if we speak about role model, then probably large public uh, consider uh, role model as uh, good quality of life, uh, developed economy, but they don't think about these issues, uh, how these things have been achieved. Actually, the high level of economy and, uh, and good levels, uh, living standards, uh, they are thanks to organization of these societies, so, uh, thanks to cooperation, to cohesion of these societies. Uh, the, not not uh, the cohesion is a result of this good economic understanding. And, and uh, this is uh, a problem I think we have probably to discuss today, that if uh, public opinion understands that for achieving these economical standards, 
we have to change also our values and, and our uh, attitudes toward each other, uh, towards our democracy. Maybe then this uh, way is not so popular anymore. And, and as we see uh, in Estonia, there are tendencies that, that for part of society maybe uh, role model are not Nordic countries, but more uh, Hungary or Poland. So, uh, <coughs> but uh, yes, uh, about the survey, if there will be uh, questions from the audience, and of course I can yeah. answer very, very <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> precisely. Uh, thank you. I think that you touched upon a very, very uh, important uh, thing, and that is uh, that is uh, very often, uh, I would say. I mean, uh, when I. I see the, the discussion in Estonia, it's very often uh, the discussion is about money, the income, the GDP and, uh, and so forth. And then, like you said, uh, in the Nordic countries there are also other dimension and uh, and in the Nordic countries we feel uh, like these other dimension are really really important and I would say the key word is trust because you couldn't uh, have such uh, societies without uh, without uh, uh, trust and uh, and uh, so I think that the, that the Nordic countries it, it is a, a kind of state of mind perhaps and uh, like you said uh, are the Estonians uh, because you can ne never in life you can you cannot uh, only uh, pick the cherries from the cake you have somebody has to pay for the cake as well and uh, are you prepared to do that Tavi? It's very good um, not to worry about the money when you actually have the money. So I think uh, objectively, of course, we are still, uh, even though we have made enormous progress and, and being an Estonian uh, myself, it's not about bragging, it's, it's, it's objective. I think uh, anyone, anyone can see that. I'm, I'm proud of my country, obviously, but also objectively, we can say that the, the uh, progress has been enormous. But I think also in terms of living standard, uh, we are not satisfied uh, with what, where we are and, and we need to do uh, uh, way more to, to catch up more with the Nordic, uh, Nordic countries. Now, answering your question about uh, uh, trust, I, I really believe that this is another key element uh, that, that we should learn from the Nordics. By the way, just re reflecting to some uh, something that has been said uh, by Kai, I, I fully agree that we are way past this stage where we, you know, if something was done in Finland, we were at this stage. If, if this is the way it's done in Finland, this is the way we should do it. You know, this this was uh, some time ago. We are way past it, and I think uh, there are many things uh, that uh, the Nordic countries should do more like we we uh, do it. But uh, but of course, others might um, uh, think differently. Now, um, trust is something um, trust into the society, but also like um, you know, understanding that this is my country, this is my government, these are my taxes and, and what is done with my tax money. It, it's kind of um, being involved, caring about this. Uh, I sincerely hope that the more people care about um, their country, their, their tax money, uh, the more conscious they are when they um, vote on the elections. And, and it's extremely important for the democracy that people are very conscious on which ideology they vote, which kind of a person they vote, uh, which ideas they vote for. So, yeah, obviously we we are still um, behind the Nordics in terms of um, the overall trust um, in the society, in terms of trusting your government and trusting your state and, and feeling like part of it. Thank you. Uh, uh, how, could, how could we change that? How can you change that so that there will be more trust? I think Trust is not only trust in institutions, it's not only trust in government. A good citizen is not only the person who goes to vote. A good citizen is not only the one who pays taxes. That's the sort of baseline, I would say. That's where everyone should start. But I do agree that this is something that we have a lot to learn from the Nordic countries. How do you actually, as a citizen, participate in the society and how do you create the environment that you live in and, and how do you trust your own influence in it? 
very often when when I talk to other Estonian civil society organizations, you see this sort of opposition between civil society organizations and the, and the ministries or, or public offices in general or, or local municipalities and, and local civil society organizations and activists. It doesn't need to be opposition and proposition, it needs to be cooperation. But in order to do that, we need to trust our fellow Estonians. And in order to actually um, trust the society and trust institutions, we first of all need to see that it's not that the government needs to provide us something, it not, it's not the services what the uh, local city uh, council provides us, but it's what kind of a civil society or what kind of a society as a whole do we as citizens create. So for example, when we look at Estonians' um, sort of attitude uh, towards the society in, in larger scale, I think one example from Norway is, is a very good comparison in sense of uh, lighthouses. If you've ever been to Norway, you know they have plenty of them. And a majority of the lighthouses in Norway are renovated only with volunteer efforts and, and with community funding. Um, the same to hiking trails and, and camping sites. They are, majority of them are built up by volunteers and community funding. And when you take Estonia, then we sort of presume, we, we expect the government to provide funding to renovate lighthouses, and, and we assume that the RMK, I, I don't know how to translate it, <laughs> um, is, is the office that needs to provide us with these services. Um, it's what we as people are willing to put into the society that actually creates the trust, not only the services that we get out of it. And I think as long as we look at the society as something that we need to be provided with, not something that we ourselves develop, um, there's little change to hope. But I do see that there's uh, s small steps in that direction. So in, in the lighthouse example, there is now first uh, Estonian lighthouse that is, is, is renovated with the uh, Ho and uh, campaign. So they created a campaign to renovate the windows of, of uh, Geri Lighthouse and, and they received 13,000 euros, which was, uh, as a starting stone, a very, very good example. So there's, there's steps in towards Estonians actually contributing to the society, but when we look at our numbers, our donations um, as a society do not hold a comparison with Nordic countries and our time that we volunteer as citizens um, does not hold the candle to what uh, people in Nordic countries contribute to. Thank you, uh, Kirsti. Now it's your turn. <laughs> for, for you, with a long experience from Estonia, and 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 since uh, Thank you. since we were talking about uh, the Nordic trust, uh, so so. Uh, how do, how do you feel? Do you see any, I mean, uh, differences or similarities or, or, or how do you conceive it? Yes, thank you for the invitation to start with. This is a wonderful opportunity and I did request Krister to give me less speech time because this is an Estonian debate, so he was not being impolite and missing me. This was, upon, this was consensual, just like the Nordic states are. Um, Yes, I think I think Johan touched one of the, the one of the item, basic items that I wanted to emphasize. A couple of others also, and it's about the welfare state, and it's about the concept. I mean, what do we, when Estonians think, or the Balts, when you think of the Nordic countries, what do you think of? You don't think of gender equality. You don't think of environmental protection. You don't talk about clean water or clean space or mothers or children. You think about the welfare state and the social security system, which is basically also based on the trust issue, that the citizens trust that the state will take care of them, also the ones who basically can't take care of themselves. And sometimes that makes, that kind of gives the impression that, that you need the state more than you actually do. And this is when we come to guys thinking about the civil society approaching the state structures. Of course, we have very, very strong straight, uh, state structures, but you also have to think of that the Nordic countries are not one. So in each of the Nordic countries, you still have a lot of, a bit of, or a lot of scale 
scale, for instance, the education in Finland is considerably better uh, statistically than the education system in Sweden. Even that, because we have kind of thought that Sweden is the best in everything, but it's not. And this was the same thing as you said, that you took the role models clean, cleanly from, kind of, you know, clinically from Finland. We also used to take them clinically from Sweden, and that time is also over. So this kind of diversification is, is, is growing, and that, of course, is the, the result of the societal development in the region, not only economic, but also in other, in many other ways, and uh, the Finnish or the Nordic uh, system is about how do you make the economic success factors, and I would rather say, and that when we come to the mindset thing, that it is about equal equality or equal opportunities or or equal rights which basically are in every constitution, but it's also about how to, how to really, in the everyday life, create them and make sure that, they are e they, that the opportunities are equal. And for instance, education is a very good example of that. Social health care is a system which now is under, which is being questioned because it's a pretty expensive one, which means that with the, with the elderly and the um, um, aging population, this is becoming a problem or an issue, a big issue, which means that actually I think that even the Nordic welfare state system needs to be revisited. And I think that's when we come exactly to what you mentioned, is about the, how to engage civil society more to, to the uh, system, which means that e or all of us will have to take more responsibility on the issues that state has taken before. But if you think of the equal opportunities angle, these are not in conflict in any way. They actually nicely and beautifully uh, support each other because all of that is based on the word that you used is trust, that you trust the system, be it then whatever it might be, but there will be a system that will that will take care of me, that will educate my children, that will also pay my pensions the time that, that I retire. Then coming to this um, social system, of course, then we come to the charity part, that what would be the state role in social security compared with, with, with um, other institutions and what would those other institutions be and that is also topical in Estonia and I do understand that in the Maslow's hierarchy of, of, of needs um, the Nordic top level is pretty far from those who started from zero in 1991 and this is what we always have to remember that this mindset thing on the other hand doesn't necessarily cost money it's about thinking but it's obvious that before a certain turning, economic turning point, money plays a bigger role than it will then after. We all that know that also from our personal experiences. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll come back to, to trust since uh, I think that, uh, that the society should more or less be marinated in, in trust that we would all gain, gain from that. And, but, and it's, uh, it's uh, the responsibility for, uh, for each and all of us uh, 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 to, 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 to deliver in this uh, respect. But now when we have such a, a great audience here, and since uh, the trust always anyway, I mean it is the politicians uh, that uh, uh, that uh, sort of uh, kind of uh, uh, personalize uh, and, and they are in the media and so forth, uh, what they are do doing and not doing. So, so they are, uh, uh, anyway, they are examples. They give examples to, uh, to all of us. So my question now to the audience is that, uh, do you trust uh, uh, your politicians? Mm. Do you trust the politicians in in Rigi, Kogu, and and and, uh, and in, all the, of them? in the government <laughs> and in the, the politicians in the local local government on a general level? Hands up now if you trust your politicians. Yeah. 
Yeah, I said, I said generally <laughs> thank speaking. You, thank you. But but uh, but of course, I mean, we saw we saw. Uh, I think uh, uh, five or, or or six hands. I actually. This is the same in, in all the countries, more or less, uh, always about when we are talking about politicians. They, they are, in this regard, they are not, generally speaking, uh, that popular. But then we have popular politicians as well. Well, uh, thank you. Yeah, that's a, that's a good introduction. Um, I think, um, uh, you know, it's, um, when you ask if you trust politicians, then uh, whomever you support, uh, you always have, uh, at least in our systems, uh, which are the same in the Nordics, you have always more parties or more ideologies that you don't support. So purely mathematically, most of the politicians are not, um, you know, I, I don't know if, if the question is in trust, but it's it's a question of, of you don't support their agenda and, and you don't necessarily like them so much. So, But, but I think in general, of course, um, we're not that good in, um, trust in, in the political system as well. And, and there is, some, uh, there is um, you know, something what we politicians must work harder on. And, and sometimes, uh, let me be very honest about it, uh, and perhaps a bit unpopular about it, we have been too populistic about some things ourselves as politicians. You know, we, we, it's so easy for parliamentarian to start uh, saying that, yes, those parliamentarians, you know, they get too much compensated and, and you know, they don't do enough work and then you know, go along with this uh, obvious easy criticism or, or populism. I would say, no, that's not the case. I mean, y you need to work hard to, to make sure that you have actually the best people there and, and, and this would increase the trust, not the kind of constant uh, saying that, you know, they are overcompensated and, and, and uh, lazy people, which some of them obviously are. Uh, but definitely not all of them. And the same applies to civil servants, the same applies to, to, to many sectors uh, of, of life uh, for that matter. But if I may add shortly to one point that was made uh, uh, by Kiristi, I very much like the point that it's not only living standard. Living standard is something that it's so easy to measure in a way. Uh, and, and we still see, you know, Finland being ahead of us, Sweden being a bit even further perhaps than in Norway with all the oil, you know, un unreachable. But, but anyways, uh, that's not it. It's also the question where your home uh, starts or stops. Is it your like home door, like the apartment door? Is it the building store? Is it the neighborhood? And I think Estonians in, in general, correct me if I'm wrong, but we are in general to care about our neighborhood and, and we tend to more and more pick up the garbage even if it's not inside our apartment, but if it's in the neighborhood. And this is not all the countries in the world, uh, people do that. And, and I think uh, this is you know, showing that in mentality, we are very close to the Nordic countries in terms of you know, caring about a wider community than, than our own apartment. Uh, so. Kirsti, you wanted to, to have a comment. Yeah, I, wa I wanted to comment on the, I wanted to comment on the uh, trust issue. Can you hear? Yes. Uh, uh, the politicians, I'm sorry, David, but politicians come and go. That's part of democracy is that, that governments come and governments go. Certain political nuances that are made in the process come and go. Some of are emphasized and less than, than others. But then we have to think of the statehood uh, as being wider, that we talk about the institutions that we, who don't come and go. So then we talk about the rescue services, we talk about police, court system, um, also um, like this rule of law concept, educational system, healthcare system, etc. So those are the, actually the ones that people touch upon in their lives. Like if you hurt your leg, what's the speed of the rescue service or the medical service is coming? But the service was pretty good, which means that there is a system that you can trust, that somebody will come. And this is something that is very high in Estonia. 90, 80, 90, 80, 90% even rescue board, I think it's over 90, which means that there is a liaison between the people and the state, which I think that this would be one of the biggest elements of the Estonian Nordic thinking at the moment, is this trust. If you go further south, the numbers are something completely different. Anti-corruption has a lot to play in this game, and that, of course, probably is another clear, measurable element of the Nordic character, which can also be internationally recognized and, 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 and bragged about. Yeah. Yeah.
Johan. Yeah, trust is a very good topic for me from <laughs> the perspective of public opinion, of course. And, and really, if we speak about role models, then uh, namely our politicians should think uh, to take role models from, from uh, Nordic countries because people trust these institutions that they can understand what they are doing. Rescue service, defense forces, police, courts. Uh, people don't understand what they are doing politicians. So we, I can t uh, really say that I trust this politician but not another. I trust this party but, but not another. But I have to trust all the system. And we, uh, public opinion, uh, people don't feel that uh, the parties, the politicians, uh, despite of the different opinions they have, uh, are trying to uh, find consensus, to find compromises, what, what is the main goal of parliamentary uh, democracy, actually. Uh, they are fighting this. Is, uh, there are very red lines, but they will not uh, <laughs> go, go over and then so on. So and this, is, this is a problem, and, and uh, it's a politic question of political culture, and of course, uh, culture in the society at all, because uh, in the 90s we started uh, as uh, individual individualist society with cowboy capitalism, and it, it has uh, in some circles continued until, until now. So, and it, it uh, of course, don't create uh, uh, trust. Uh, I know that Mark Lahr liked to what uh, Margaret Thatcher said, there is not, not such thing like society, there are individuals in, uh, who, are, who are competing. Uh, and uh, and uh, namely, the, the question how, how to cooperate, and also uh, politicians in this meaning should be examples that, despite of uh, different opinions, is possible to find, find compromise and, and go ahead. If, yeah, I, if I may reflect to that, uh, in general I agree, but uh, I think there are very, very serious um, political, if you call it, fights or debates in every country. Also the, the most calmest or most boring, uh, to put the, to Leonard Mary's word, uh, um, Nordic countries. But, but you're right to say about political culture, first of all. Um, I think uh, things like backstabbing and I think things like betrayal and also like uh, for example what I admire in, in Finnish uh, culture which is not there for example in Denmark necessarily uh, is, is that the, the, the party that wins the elections will have the first go uh, to form a government and, and nobody challenges that even if the you know nobody says that okay but but we have like you know three other coalition partners and we try to kind of you know kick you out because we don't like you for some reason who wins the election has the first go and this is this is honest because this reflects the public opinion and even though the as those of you who know the Finnish politics the the differences uh, between party uh, parties in terms of popularity from our perspective are, are very very small now in, in addition to to what what has been said by others I, I fully agree that I don't need to trust all the politicians. I don't need to trust all the ministers in all the governments. But I want, as a citizen, to trust the parliament. I want, as a citizen, to trust the government. Not necessarily this government who is in par par uh, like power right now or in any other time. Not the particular government, but the government functioning and, and doing its job. Uh, and, and I think, uh, you know, um, perhaps I, I just, Looking at the kind of political debate, uh, I, I think what is hurting the, the the parliament's reputation most is is always those very small um, kind of marginal things. Actually, it's not the quality of the political debate that is hurting the parliament. It's the um, it's the question what is always raised that whether 101 people is too much or whether we should you know fire the 30 guys from there. Or I think. This is beyond the point. This, this, this is not, not the exact topic. The topic is, what is the quality of the debate? And this is something we should focus on. And, and, and I think we, again, we have developed a lot since the 90s. There is, uh, Mart Nuit was here at least a moment ago. He has told so good stories about political debates in the early 90s in, in Estonia. And I think we have gone a long way from that. <laughs> On a positive direction, of course. Thank you. Uh, anyone in the audience who would uh, like to put forward a, a question or, 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 or comment on this topic? Yeah. 
Uh, hello, I'm uh, Midis, and actually I work for the Nordic Council of Ministers' Office <laughs> in Estonia. But uh, I was wondering if I might ask uh, Girsti, uh, namely, when we talk about Nordic and Baltic uh, countries nowadays, then we are talking more about uh, partnership. Uh, more than uh, role modeling so uh, uh, the, the partnership always functions better when there are joint um, structures uh, uh, could, could you maybe mention or what in, in your opinion which kind of uh, um, Nordic cooperation structures could be used for a better partnership cooperation with uh, Estonia for example Well, I think that uh, how the Nordic structures look at Estonia, they don't look at Estonia, they look at the NB8 region, they look at the Nordic-Baltic cooperation, which means that particularly for Estonia, I don't think that there would be um, uh, very much room. However, there was a very good initiative not long ago that anyways, this also this NB8, like Nordic Baltic 8 countries cooperation needs a bit of boosts every now and then. I think that the film board was just started closer cooperation only with Estonia lately, uh, only, only a while ago. Um, but I think that this Nordic Baltic thing is a very important thing and that would also give the Baltic states, the three of them, the po opportunity to do th more things on this level, on this kind of you know value-based level as well. And I think that would be the structure that we would need. But if we think of the on the bilateral level, we were just discussing today, as the prime ministers will meet in Helsinki on Sunday, Prim Prime Minister Sipilä and Ratas, uh, Mr. Ratas, they will go by, by, by bicycling because there is a Finland Estonia 100 200 years of a memorial kind of a um, festive event in Helsinki. We were discussing the joint st government meeting that was took place in May, and yeah, I fully agree that this kind of that the, the structures keep uh, somehow g give format to cooperation, and I think that this Nordic Baltic would be an example of what that there is a lot to be done in that field and i also heard that estonian and latvian governments are having joint sessions shortly so uh, th this means that this kind of regional thinking is gaining a lot of space also in the questions like let's say artificial intelligence bioeconomy things that are only arising so we are not looking back what mm -hmm. models we can learn from each other, but we are looking forward to what we can actually do and accomplish and build together, as we do happen to have a very similar, anyways, culturally, historically, similar, similar way of doing things, even if we are economically very, sometimes very far. I mean, Finland is always far behind uh, Norway and Sweden, and we will always be far behind them economically, mm -hmm. but that's, that's not an issue after a point. Thank you. There was a question, so please. Thank you. You can, you you can be happiest. Be. We also. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Udo Akamimo. I'm a journalist from Kenya. Um, I'm here with uh, Tallinn University, the Baltic Film um, School. Um, and so these are my fellow journalists. Um, so I'm curious, um, Tavi, you said that uh, there are things that are still um, to be admired from the Nordic countries, and I think Kai um, referenced that as well. I'd like to know what you still could emulate from the Nordic countries, but I'd also like to know specifically what uh, Estonia has to offer the mm. Nordic countries, because of course these conversations are always framed. I think Kai, this was your point: um, Big Brother and you know the junior democracy following in the footsteps of others. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I think it's uh, it's a very Good question, and, and it's uh, perhaps easier to be answered by somebody who's not Estonian because they can um, look a bit more objectively about uh, what Estonia has to offer. But, but I think in general, uh, what is uh, definitely different here is, in many ways, we are a bit more hungry, and then we are a bit more dynamic because of that, which in uh, a way would be a good thing. I, I would challenge Kirsti by saying that it's not for granted that Finland would never pass Sweden or Norway. Yes, it's the, the, the living standard of or, or the whatever standard we measure, the GDP, whatever, is, is very high in Norway because they have oil. But will oil be so important in 100 years? Obviously not. Um, will as the kind of old 
capital in Sweden that has been there like for thousands of years, will that ma matter that so much in, in 20 years? I guess not. So, so I think uh, in the future, well, this is our belief here in Estonia, that uh, in the future, small countries who are hungry have a chance to be more successful than, than you know, those who are traditionally very successful because they are big or because they have some sort of, of resources. Um, now, in terms of cooperation, um, I, I agree with uh, Kirsty. By the way, the Finnish-Estonian uh, relationship is, is uh, something that you cannot describe to to too easy to anyone who is not either Finn or Estonian. It's besides the Nordic comp uh, or like you know, it's above the, the Nordic cooperation for us uh, at least, uh, and, and probably for the Finns as well because we are. It's it's very close to to, to very close nationalities, language, culture, mentality, everything, and and, and I think uh, many things that we do together with Finns uh, have taken us uh, where we are and, and this cooperation is, is I immensely important uh, both ways. But something that, that Estonia could contribute and is contributing to it is for example uh, taking uh, public services uh, not only being transparent like they are in the Nordics but taking them to the next level which is digital which for us is like you know, absolute the logical thing to do uh, because we are very practical people but this is still something not there necessarily in, in other countries so that's just a very very practical example where we could uh, put something to the table uh, Kirsty, uh, the floor is yours. Just a very very good comment on that yes but it, the point is actually that I don't I d it doesn't matter if Sweden is bigger or richer. And this is exactly what you were saying, that, that it's not your home step or your house or your yard, because it's a larger entity. We, f we give them gladly, because they are, that's also that, they, that means economic prosperity for us. Uh -huh. And in, if you look at the United Nations, all kinds of, you know, all, all kinds of, you know, how do you call them, uh, Rankings, yes, thank you. Rankings, if you look at the top five in any positive ones, you have the Nordic countries there in different order. So in some countries, Norway is first, and then Sweden is first, and then Denmark is first, and then Finland is first. So the family, it goes in the family, and I think this family thinking is something that this NB8 would have no problem becoming. Uh, Kai, you wanted to continue. Yes, I would. I would even add to that. I, I wanted to go to where Gerti just went in in saying that economy is not the only thing that we have uh, to learn from the Nordic countries, but it it doesn't necessarily, as I already pointed out. Um, there are loads of things in civil society sector that we have to learn, but at the same time that we have to offer. So when you look at initiatives created in Estonian, then Estonians are the ones who are basically going to clean the world. Because on 15th of September, let's do it, uh, let's clean the world initiative that was started here um, is, is something that has gone global. Yeah. And, and this is something that these similar initiatives are something that Nordic countries have got to learn from Estonia. Because Estonians, we are small, both in country size and both in population size. And that means that we need to be creative. Um, but it also means that we need to cooperate because all of the successful initiatives that Nordic countries have something to learn from us are examples where Estonians actually put their heads together and, and figure st stuff out together. And that's something that we still need to learn from the Nordic countries, because cooperation is something that, um, if you take, for example, Tudai Oigos, Pearo and Andres, then this is a regular Estonian neighbors nowadays as well. Mm -hmm. That is something that needs to change. Because when we talk about uh, the feeling of family, the feeling of, of community, the feeling of, of, yes, I belong to this, I, I, I contribute to this, then, then this is something that the Nordic countries are far advanced. But, but this is an example of cooperation. And, and this is something that I only know because I've, I've <laughs> visited all the countries. I've, I've cooperated with loads of civil society organizations in all of the Nordic countries. And, and I've, I've talked to them. And that means that I, as a person, have, have created this sort of space for communication and, and open myself up and, and say, you know, this is how we do it in Estonia. Tell me, how do you do it in, in Iceland, in, in Norway, in Sweden, in Finland? And, and not only limiting ourselves to that, there are loads of initiatives that we have to learn from Latvia, from Lithuania, 
Because if we look further from economy, if we take, for example, happiness statistics and happiness rankings, then Latvia and Lithuania advance us in there. Mm. Yeah, uh, thank you. I would actually like to continue from there because, uh, <coughs> and what uh, uh, Kirsti said, that, like uh, at a certain stage, it's not that important if you have if your economy is a little bit better or, 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 or worse than your your neighbors really. At some point, uh, uh, other things become uh, very important. And uh, and when you think about this uh, uh, UN happiness uh, uh, ranking, where the Nordic countries uh, always are in top, now now it is Finland uh, that is the. Uh, ha 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 happiest uh, uh, country in the world, and there this uh, this uh, this uh, 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 economy is just one measurement. Mm -hmm. So there are also uh, countries that are very high up, like uh, like from uh, uh, Caribbean or somewhere, that, uh, that they don't have uh, that good economy, but but they are uh, quite happy for uh, understandable reasons. So now, but then, then this huge difference comes uh, to Estonia compared to the Nordic countries. If I, if I remember correctly, I think that Estonia was on something like uh, 72nd. And it's uh, enormous, uh, this, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, this uh, gap. So I've been wondering that, uh, that why don't uh, uh, Estonian politicians, why don't, uh, why don't they take, why don't uh, somebody take this on their agenda to make that, uh, to make, uh, 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 to say that uh, I would like to make uh, the Estonians the happiest people in the world. Would you vo vote for me if I would have that on, on the agenda? Hands up. <laughs> <laughs> but how? So, so, Tavi, would you yeah. take this on your agenda for in well, the upcoming? I, I, think, uh, elections. I, I think it's easy to to say that let's let's be the happiest in the world but then the trick is you know how to reach there uh, I think you know it. yeah how to define it is also yeah but I, I do hope that after this warm summer we will be at least a bit happier so that there is a there is a small <laughs> chance in that w what's actually interesting those of you who know Kirsti know that uh, she's as close to an Estonian that you can come without an Estonian passport or, or even even without that she's, she's like really Estonian but if you if you like what what she just said about this uh, not um, being important whether your neighbor is is ahead of you this is the least Estonian thing I have ever heard her say, because uh, you know, for us, uh, let me give you an example. Our state auditor uh, a few, few years back made a statement saying that, took some random stats and saying like, "Oh my God, now even Lithuania has passed us in these stats," and everybody was like, you know, in big news, like, "Oh my God, Lithuania has done some something better." And, and we were like in national panic because of that. And those of you who are Estonians, you remember that. Uh, and, and there are many cases, of course. And, and we, we would never say that we don't care if Latvia is better than us, <laughs> because we always think that you know we must we must work hard um, to be better than at least our, our southern neighbors. Um, now, of course, I exaggerated a bit, but only a bit, because uh, I think um, uh, I don't know if it makes us less happy. It might, because if you're on a constant stress level of, of you know, I want more, um, then you might be uh, less happy. And, and you don't, you know, if, if you look back to the 90, uh, the summer of 92, uh, I, my, my family of five, my parents and, and, uh, and brother and, and, and sister, we lived in a flat of, of uh, 63 Point five, which was exaggerated but by that time, um, uh, square meters. And, and each of us, I think it was, I don't remember if, if it was per kids as well or, or per adults only, each of us got a bit less than 10 euros worth of convertible uh, currency because of the um, uh, reform. We changed the rubles and got 150 kroons, uh, kroons which was like, um, like the start money, so go with it. Now, if you think about that today, even with all the challenges we still have, so we have gone an enormous way, and, and for at, at some point, I think we Estonians should learn to be thankful for for what has been good in in our journey of, of twenty something years. Uh, but then, after being <laughs> thankful, we, <laughs> we need to carry on and <laughs> catch up with the Nordics. Thank you, Johan. Yeah. Uh, Yes, of course, but uh, 
I think uh, people, the happy feeling of happiness, uh, we, we uh, compare ourselves with, with our neighbors, with, with uh, possible <laughs> possible lives, and and uh, uh, I think one one big reason is in, in inequality in the society. And uh, if we look this happiness uh, uh, list, then uh, these countries where the Gini index is lower, there are a bit more happiness, and where the differences are very big, uh, there is uh, people are also more unhappy because in the large public <laughs> usually is um, below this medium medium level. So um, a lot a lot of uh, uh, sociologists nowadays say that, that uh, Karl Marx theories will be mo act actual again because uh, inequality in the world is is uh, increasing. Not not in Estonia. God forbid. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this uh, the results of the work work will uh, go to the very. Uh, Small circle of of owners and and uh, all, all other people are without uh, property. So this this is uh, one one way of development. Yeah, that's uh, clearly a huge challenge for the future. I, I realize now that I forgot to introduce the fifth uh, member of the panel. It's uh, Piccola, but uh, but she apparently thinks that it's quite boring <laughs> since she's sleeping. But uh, uh, Kirsty, you wanted to to add something. Uh, yes, I was just actually picking up, picking up what you were saying, but was thinking about that before also, that this kind of uh, boring, being boring means actually being stable. And this equal opportunities issue and equal uh, possibilities is keeping the society stable. Mm -hmm. And that's why also populistic movements are gaining. Yes, they are gaining pace. Of course, so in, in other countries, in, 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 in the Nordic countries, of course, but in a different way. And that combined with good education and good media literacy, which actually comes together with the, uh, with the package. I think that this stability is something that we definitely should be striving for. And this would also mean that the structures carry over also critical moments and that that uh, people believe that they have a reason to live in this state and, and they, they yearn for stability more than they yearn for prosperity. Yeah, uh, on the other hand, it, I mean, you can see also tendencies in the world that uh, people also, they, they get, a when they get a little bit bored, then they want some drama also, they want some, some changes that, that can be almost uh, uh, violent. But uh, let's move forward. Uh, if, uh, my question now to the audience is that if you, if you uh, would like uh, Estonia to, to be, uh, or have the Nordics as a role model, you see it as a role model, and, and, and but uh, are you then also uh, prepared to, to pay for it? For example, one, one thing that is uh, common for all the Nordic countries is, uh, is uh, uh, progressive uh, uh, taxation. So are you prepared to, to pay the price in order to help the weakest in the society? Hands up if you are prepared. Okay. Um, over half of, of the audience uh, uh, is prepared to, to, for, for progressive taxes. And now, Tavi. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what, what's your comment? I, I think uh, I think Johan uh, will agree that uh, if you take the st same uh, study uh, among um, among Estonians, you would get uh, a bit different uh, result. But uh, but let me let me just challenge this point. I think uh, you know I th I think it's good if if the society or the people in the society. And obviously here uh, we have um, more and more people, or most of the people here, are very conscious about um, the society and, and the impact. But uh, but uh, it's very good if you if you do care um, in, about paying taxes and understanding that this actually will result in something. But I don't think that uh, the Nordics are the Nordics because of the high taxes. I think. Uh, uh, it's much more important uh, to see the kind of settlement of the of the society, uh, the, the trust, the the stability, 
and, and all those um, criteria. I, I definitely don't agree that uh, uh, Karl Marx uh, should become uh, popular <laughs> again because uh, those societies, when um, it has been practiced, uh, what he preaches, have been equally poor. I don't know any society preaching Karl Marx's uh, practice who is equally rich. So, and, and, and I think today, anyone uh, here who is Estonian or, or, or from the Baltic countries who is at least as old as, as I am, to, uh, remembers well that uh, the society we had before, well, we were like, you know, everybody of us were equally much uh, worse off than we are now, e even, even, um, even with uh, the disparities which are, are kind of part of the society, obviously. Um, yeah, that's what I want to say. Yeah, please. I, I just wanted to add that it's not only paying progressive taxes, but it's to start off in Estonia, it's just, you know, plainly paying taxes and trusting that your taxes actually contribute the society in a way that is better for the entire society, not only for the members of parliament and not only for your local municipalities, because um, during the... Um, municipality reform, we saw a lot of people actually just using that situation for their own benefit and that created even more mistrust in, in the local government. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's also additionally to just paying taxes, it's about caring about your citizens, caring about minorities, actually considering people who speak Russian and, and consider themselves Estonians and, and accepting them as, as members of our society and, and accepting people from different backgrounds, people with different um, educational level, di people with disabilities, all these types this is something that is inherently adapted in Nordic countries that, you know, this is something that we work towards. Um, integration, understanding that people are equal uh, regardless of, of where they come from. And this is something that is, is not only uh, looking from the perspective of taxes, but as a, as a human being, do we actually care for for Estonians being not only from Vural County and, and speaking Estonian purely without any uh, mistakes. And, and we do see that people need more acceptance. And, and that is something I think that we have to learn from oh. the Nordic countries. Then comments first, uh, Kirsti, and then uh, Tavi. Yes, this is, I'm glad you took it, took it up because this was also something that I would have taken up myself. And, and that, what does equal opportunities mean? It means that every economic and societal resource of the society is being used to benefit the society and to benefit the state. And this is the basis. This is where we actually started from. This is where, where the basis for this, uh, this welfare state also comes from, that the resources that you have are being used. And uh, of course, first, I have to, of course, I don't have to, but I do believe in gender equality. And I'm sure that you also, when you were compiling the pal panel, you had this in your mind, that the gender balance should be there. And it's not about mathematics. It's about that we have different kinds of angles and I think it's actually not even making that men and women are the same but they are equal and they have different maybe angles to the contribute to the debate so and this is the reason why you have to have both men and women and younger and 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 uh, elderly ladies also involved so this is the point and this is about the resources and this is the connection to the welfare state and since we are here at the democracy area, I would say that it's part of that as well. But, uh, Tavi? Yeah, well, just uh, thinking about that, what Kirsti said, actually, it has been for one and a half years, for the first time in Estonian history, we have a female president, which is something that I think um, should uh, change the mind of people. What kind of what the president should be like, or, or it's, it's not only one stereotype of, of, of leader of, of the country or, or, or head of state. The, the, the same opportunity for the first time, uh, we have a real opportunity, I would argue, uh, for a female prime minister to step in office after the next election. So, so that's actually uh, very, very fascinating from that perspective as well. But, um, but I fully agree that engaging um, not only, not only women, perhaps, uh, which is also very important, but also um, 
non-native Estonians uh, and, and, and also people who are in any way different than us is, is a huge challenge for us. Uh, and uh, one point that I have heard you making um, on our discussions before is, is that diversity is actually a huge source of, of pro uh, uh, prosperity and this is something you know again something we should um, uh, learn to understand more but my comment that I wanted to have before is uh, a bit uh, not, not that arguing with Kai but, but just uh, just uh, pointing out that Estonians actually are very very good in paying taxes uh, and, and I, I, I think uh, the reason for that I, I, I perhaps I want to think but, but I, I think also objectively one of the reasons for that is that we have kept uh, quite reasonable uh, tax levels so it's just like uh, you pay the tax you don't have any kind of problems but, but this is a balance that any government could easily mess up and, and this is very very important balance to keep just to make an example not wanting to tell anything bad about any of our neighboring countries but but uh, just just as, as a point of, of fact only VAT gap the, the money that uh, Latvia doesn't collect from VAT, only this cap alone uh, in Latvia is 2.5% uh, of GDP higher than in Estonia, which is like, you know, only the, if, if Latvians would collect as much VAT um, uh, as, as we do in Estonia, uh, they would uh, kind of easily pay for their defense. Uh, so that, that's, that's properly huge. So, so I would compliment Estonians on paying the taxes. And I, I hope that uh, one part why it is so is, is that we have fairly reasonable taxation system. Uh, I thought, uh, before I give uh, the floor to Kirsti, uh, I thought to ask, uh, do you have any uh, question or comments on, on, on on, t for example, taxation, because that uh, is, of course, quite a quite a, a, a delicate subject. No questions, no comments. But then, uh, uh, Kirsti, I, she I has. have uh, just a sentence on the taxation. I think one of the uh, best things that Estonia has done as far as taxation is concerned is the e-services, the digital services of paying your taxes, because that's the same thing in Finland. I don't have to fill in any tax reform. I just get a proposal from the government saying that you think this, uh, do you think that this is okay? If it's okay, you don't do anything. So the same thing is that it's easy for you to pay your taxes. Mm -hmm. And that's why they are collected so efficiently. And this was also confirmed by Marek Helm, the previous th uh -huh. the MR chief. Uh -huh. Just to add on the taxations, and then I would like to go back to the uh, female president and, and that resolving the issue of gender equality. Um, I remember when we implemented the system of, of um, registering employees um, during two days. I think it, the number was 2,000. Johan, you can help me with the statistics here, maybe. Um, during two days in the construction sector, 2,000 volunteers were registered uh, to voluntarily work on construction sites. Mm -hmm. and, and I do assume they get paid, just unofficially. And, and yes, in, in general, statistically speaking, Estonians do pay taxes, yes, but at the same time, the numbers of estimation of, of what is actually not going into the municipalities and, and uh, government's budget, because people pay less taxes than they actually show their earnings, um, then this gap is quite high. And that is, is money that we do not trust uh, to give to the system, that we see should be stayed with us. And, and going back to the gender equality issue as well, um, I think this is something that Estonia needs to work on. Because if we look at our pay gap, it's one of the highest in, in European countries. And I wouldn't even go to compare ourselves with the Nordic countries. Um, that's a leap I, I would be just depressed about. But um, having a female president, yes, it's a good example, but it's not something that r solves the problem. I think US is a perfect example how having a black president does not solve racial issues. They just, you know, 
are somewhere hidden there and not public, but with the following president, everything is out in the open because you know you have a president that thinks that you can say anything about anyone. And, and this is something that we need to work in Estonia. And, and, and again, this is not something that the government can solve. This is something that Estonians can solve. If us as people actually see it as an issue and, and try to think how us as an organization, us as institutions, how do we implement ourselves? And, and yes, having a female prime minister would be very nice, but having a party with equal number of candidates for both female and male uh, representatives, having this sort of striped situation where you have candidates um, come side by side to each other, not having a female candidate at the top and then number 73 maybe. Um, I think this is the situation that we need to strive for in Estonia. Thank you. I would like to take a couple of uh, uh, steps uh, backwards, actually, and, uh, and uh, when we were briefly talking about this uh, uh, NB8 cooperation, and uh, like we all know, uh, in the, within the Nordic countries, the cooperation, we love the cooperation, and we love also the cooperation uh, uh, with the Baltic countries. But what, uh, what about the cooperation within the Baltic countries? That, uh, that's not very institutionalized, and I think that you uh, have a lot of similarities also, and that you really could, could gain, even though this is not, not, not uh, really now a Nordic issue, but, but I mean the cooperation is kind of a Nordic issue, so in that sense uh, mm -hmm. uh, we can think about it, of course, in Nordic terms as well. Well, funnily enough, uh, a lot of the cooperation uh, between the Baltics is actually in the Nordic-Baltic uh, framework. So, for example, uh, uh, when I visited um, the European Councils as, as uh, Estonian Prime Minister, every time before every any, any meeting, we had a me pre-meeting between the six Prime Ministers of the Nordic countries that are in the EU and the Baltic countries. And, and that was very useful because we only have altogether like, I don't know, 20 to 10, 25 million people, but we have six seats out of 28 around the table. And that is very, very practical uh, to raise each other's issues. You know, if, if uh, Latvia has a uh, concern, Sweden might raise that because it might be more practical this way. Um, we do have some sort of uh, cooperation that is like almost institutionalized uh, between the Baltic countries as well but it's not going nearly as well. We, we wouldn't even compare ourselves the, uh, with the Nordic uh, cooperation, and I don't think it, it is as well as the Nordic Baltic cooperation as well. So there is still a lot of things to do. Even though uh, we have so many practical things to um, solve together. Uh, energy market issues, extremely important, <coughs> building a proper railway, uh, well, one classic example, actually, it, it reflects very well the trust and when, when you, how you can lose the trust of people in, in taxation is you, you would never see this kind of uh, alcohol rally to, to Latvia if, if Estonian, Latvian and Lithuanian or let's say at least Estonian, Latvian and Finnish uh, prime minister would sit down and agree what kind of excise levels uh, could be in the next five years. That is a missed opportunity. And, and actually, this is not only Estonians going to Latvia because of 70% um, higher taxes than the previous year, but that's actually also Swedes going to Finland, Finns going to Estonia, Danes going to Germany, so uh, Norwegians coming to Sweden. So that actually shows that <laughs> if you put the taxation level to, um, uh, to this high that people think that, okay, but you know, it's easier for, for me not to pay that, then they show it with their movement and, and behavior. Uh, and it's perfectly legal because we are all one uh, economic uh, area. And, and I don't think we should blame for them uh, because of that. We should th simply admit that, OK, perhaps we have gone too far in this policy or you know, look solutions together because policymakers cannot ignore that we are all the same area anyways. May I, may, I, may I ask, uh, Tavi, why you missed the opportunity to agree with uh, Latvian and Lithuanian prime ministers because your government started to uh, raise uh, taxes for alcohol? If you uh, actually, if you would be um, 
doing your job well now, then you would know that from 2010, every year until 2016, uh, the alcohol excise grew uh, 10 to 15 percent from 2010. Oh, that so was 10, to... yeah, all the governments, all the years, ever since then. Uh, and, and this is a statistical thing, and, and you can you can uh, you can check the facts. Uh, but when and, and uh, actually 2016, uh, the alcohol excise. Um, uh, it, it, it went up every year until 2016, and, and the consumption went down. So in essence, I'm not saying that excise is a bad thing. On the contrary, when I, I do my, I, I actually work uh, part time as a hobby in, in a student business school as, as a, um, uh, I give lectures on, on taxation, and I say that taxing harmful consumption is one of the most justest things you can ever do. But what went wrong in this was was a hike of tax uh, in one particular area, 70%, which is beer excise and cider excise, and another one was 45%, which was uh, on wine. So that, that actually, you know, I think people, if it would have been over seven years, I don't think we would have seen such hike in uh, in um, in uh, going to other country uh, to, to buy the, those things. But, but uh, just on the cooperation, actually, finance ministers uh, have been cooperating. It's not always easy. Sometimes, uh, to be honest, Estonians uh, have uh, deliberately kept the alcohol excise a bit lower so that Finns keep coming. Uh, uh, it's not a secret that we, when we consider how high the excises uh, should be, we honestly have thought that if there will be less Finns coming, uh, we consider raising it less. And I'm not sure if it's uh, very kind of um, uh, honest or, or very pure, like or very ethical consideration. But this is something that we have we have done. So, so just just to not, not uh, insulting in any way, but but just a, as a mathematical fact, the alcohol excise has risen from 2010 to 2016 all the time the same rate. There has never been such a kind of huge hike before, and that is what, in my opinion, uh, was unjust. Alcohol is always a wonderful subject. I mean, I mean <laughs> if you don't get uh, people speaking, then then. Uh, uh, talk about uh, alcohol and then you have a lot of opinions or, or use some alcohol then you will also get a lot of opinions usually. Uh, Kirsti, you, you, you had yeah, a comment. Just that it's, it's been a, a bit amusing even to follow the debate now between Estonia and Latvia because it's identical to the debate between Finland and Estonia, oh. let's say 15 years ago. And I think you probably have been, yes, increasing the excise taxes, which you need for building the welfare state. Of course, that's where the money comes from. That's the easiest thing to tax. And you can easily also say that it's actually the state taking care of your health. And, uh, but, um, because the consumption of the or the Finns coming to Estonia to buy alcohol is really really small at the moment. They are the ones who have weddings and 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 birthdays and big parties, but most uh, tourists. Uh, buy nothing or buy one bottle of something, a good wine or something. So that's not the reason to come to Estonia anymore but because there's so much else. Okay. In early 90s there was very little else. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you said that because I, I had a recently an interview in Finnish language to, to MTV and I said the same thing that, you know, despite the excise levels going up and, and despite uh, it's not so attractive to come because of that there are so many other reasons to come and, and I, I'm quite sure that the 10 million people that go back and forth all the time they are not all here because of the alcohol that's a uh, kind of big big kind of uh, myth uh, as well uh, thank you uh, time is flying as we used to said in say in Finnair uh, <laughs> so it is uh, uh, time to round up do you have any comments or questions now? More alcohol, less alcohol, higher taxes, lower taxes, more social welfare, more cooperation with uh, the Nordic countries, with the Baltic countries. Well, if not, then I would uh, 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 like to put forward a question to, to, to all the, the panelists and to, for them to, to, to give 
their own view on how they would like to see the cooperation between the Nordic countries and Estonia, and why not also in a, in a regional context like with the other Baltic countries in, 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 in the future. Uh, where, what, which one are the sectors that we should uh, put more uh, focus on, and, and is there anything that we uh, should do less perhaps? I don't know, but uh, I would like to know. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we are about to, and we have done already many things to create a common energy market. This is a huge leap for all of us in terms of energy security. And despite the common belief that um, energy price can only go up, actually, in our case, uh, being part of a common uh, Nordic uh, energy market has brought the electricity price down considerably. And, and, and we can also have a lot of trade because of that, but we are not fully there yet. So this energy market is one thing. Uh, logistics, all sorts of transport uh, issues, we can only solve them together, be it uh, the craziest project we have or the most ambitious project we have, a tunnel between uh, uh, Tallinn and Helsinki, or be it uh, much more simple things like uh, road and railway connections uh, between our countries. So, so they are the, the kind of projects where it's not possible to work alone, or like only Latvia is building a railway and then it leads from one Latvian border to another. This is not possible. So, so that's obvious. Uh, secondly, I already mentioned digital cooperation and of course it's a bit again Estonian thing to say but I think it's so easy actually to create common digital services that it's a bit a shame even that we haven't uh, managed to do that. Uh, a few years ago we, we uh, wrote a, um, uh, signed a roadmap together with Juha Sipila and uh, as far as I know it's going according to the plan but uh, in, uh, there is actually no reason why a Finnish citizen having, um, uh, for example, a family practitioner in, in Kuopio or, or Porvo uh, coming to Paita could not get the digital prescription uh, visible here as well. Uh, uh, and then this, these are kind of minor things that the government has to do in order to achieve a huge uh, quality uh, gain for our citizens. When if Tavi spoke about what the governments can do and what kind of sort of joint systems we can build, then I'll take it down uh, several notches and say, again, um, civil society sector is people. Um, so civil society organizations can cooperate with, with different countries and we see that. We see Norway funding Estonian civil society organizations. We see a lot of organizations cooperating with, with their fellows in, in Latvia and Lithuania. But what actually comes of it is something that needs to further Estonian sort of mentality. And, and we very often see that um, we have bilateral cooperation among civil society organizations. So for example, Women's Shelter, uh, uh, Human Rights um, Center, working together with, with organizations, their fellows in, in Norway and Sweden. But, but that does not, I think, reach enough regular everyday Estonians. And I think this is something that we need to, need to work on, is, is that there is a lot of cooperation and there is something that we can, we can share and learn from each other. But how do we actually share that information uh, with our fellow Estonians is, I think, something that uh, we in civil society sector and, and us as people need to consider as well. <coughs> yeah. So there was government perspective and uh, civil society's perspective. Uh, I am thinking currently very much about our planet's future and and about the green green issues. That is uh, uh, the way how the mankind actually can survive or not. And one common thing we have Baltic and Nordic countries is Baltic Sea. I think the natural protection, keeping our sea clean, and and all, all such kind of measures would be very important uh, field of, of better cooperation. Well, <clears throat> I request it to be the last because this is an Estonian thinking that I only think that as an outsider, even though I'm close to an Estonia, I'm still a Finnish civil servant and anyways we'll be leaving in a few weeks, but I would rather anyways go to the value thing 
that I think we could do more on the gender equality issues because that's such a valuable and necessary thing. I always, I've used this metaphor that if my husband had not taken part in taking care of children and home and cooking and cleaning, we would only have one child. We have two, which means that if you talk about the the aging population and increasing the population of, of Estonia, gender equality and men participating in so-called women's work is absolutely necessary. The other thing is on the value, uh, the value based is the LGBT, the sexual minorities issue. I still find it very, uh, how should I say, surprising. Yes, honestly surprising, because it doesn't fit to the agenda really, to the Estonian or, or the uh, Estonian slash Nordic slash Baltic Sea region agenda, that sexual inclination should have any role in any way in defining people. I understand the language issue, I understand the historical burden, I understand all that. I even might understand the gender thing, but the sexual minority thing I just don't. And I. I think that the Baltic Pride that was in Tallinn last year was a positive surprise for many because their participation was was a lot bigger and it's a process that also in Finland has not been, it's not an ancient thing, it's pretty fresh actually, which means that the politicians and media should give the people the encouragement and the right and the kind of the, uh, you know, the freedom to express themselves by participating in the in the marches, whatever your own inclination might be, to support. And this is where the Nordic mindset could be demonstrated and then extend it also to others. Thank you, Kirsti. Uh, I hope we can agree with these uh, wonderful uh, comments from our uh, panelists. Uh, a big uh, thank you to, to all of you, and, and I hope that you will enjoy the, the, the afternoon here in uh, Paide. And a huge thank you to the audience. Uh, thank you for participating, and a big hand to the, uh, our panelists. Thank you.